When it comes to the meta inside Destiny 2, it finds itself shifting with every new season that rotates around. This could be because of a multitude of things like buffs, nerfs, new exotics, the artifact, etc. And that means that the community is constantly changing around what weapons they use most. And that's what I want to talk about today. With the help of Destiny Tracker, we're going to be taking a look at the top 15 most popular weapons that are in use right now for PvE in Season of the Witch. And as I go from weapon to weapon, I'll be explaining why they're at the spot they're at, or at least why I think so, as well as going over where you might get them and what their best perks are if they're legendary. So subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content, follow the Twitch channel to catch me live multiple times a week, and let's jump into this. Also, a massive thank you to my Patreon and Tier 2 YouTube members. You guys are amazing. So, kicking today's video off, we're going to be talking about what has quickly become one of my favorite special weapons, number 15, the Aramite. This weapon is brand new with the Season of the Witch and has made its splash into the community thanks to being easily obtainable via the new seasonal content, as well as just having a fantastic role of Envious Assassin and Controlled Burst slash Reservoir Burst. I personally have found myself using this weapon a lot in the Crota Zen Raid in between my rocket shots as I let them auto reload, but tons more players are also giving this weapon a spin in Nightfalls thanks to Unstop Fusion being an artifact perk. I know that many players out there are still hooked on rapid fire frames when it comes to fusion rifles, but the Aramite alone has simply turned me over into becoming a high impact enjoyer. Number 14, Aladic Principle. I'm going to get 100% real with every single one of you watching this video. This is the only weapon in today's upload that absolutely confuses the mess out of me as to why it's appearing in the top 15. Aladic Principle, just like the Aramite, comes from the new Season of the Witch content, meaning it is pretty easily obtainable, and I guess it's getting so much use due to it being both new and the fact that we have Overload Machine Gun this season. I can't really think of much else because I'm going to be honest with y'all, this gun absolutely blows. While it comes with a pretty great second column perk like Target Lock, the first column perks are just not it unless you're going for Ensemble or maybe Zen Moment. It just seems like an absolute waste of a heavy slot in my opinion, and I'm not sure which NPCs are giving this thing so much traction. Number 13, Amit AR2. You know, I'm actually kind of glad that Amit is finally getting some recognition as a longtime enjoyer of the weapon myself, although I'm pretty sure it's initially for the wrong reasons. See, earlier in the season, people were crafting auto rifles that fired shotgun pellets at high RPMs. The Amit was basically everyone's first choice when it came to making that happen. Now that the bug is fixed, I imagine we still have some players that are using it after the fact because not only do we have anti-barrier auto this season, but also because Amit is genuinely a solid solid auto rifle. I have a crafted ambitious assassin and incandescent role that I use quite frequently and was even running during my day one crota clear a while back. It's a solid option if you basically want callous mini tool but at a safe distance. Number 12, the other half. Last season's ranking number 3. The other half has definitely had a fall from grace coming off of last season, and I'm honestly surprised given how much use I get out of the sword and the abyss encounter of Crota's Inn. Regardless, utility weapons like this will see varying amounts of use for one reason or another, and that's just how it is. Anyways, if you don't have one already, this sword makes you go fast, and a lot of people in the community, myself included, like to go fast. You can get it from Dares of Eternity and make sure to craft the role of Eager Edge and Frenzy. Number 11. Wither Horde. Last season's ranking number two. I'm not gonna lie, after making so many episodes of the most popular series and seeing Wither Horde towards the top of the list for each one, it's kind of refreshing to see it lower this time around. I'll be the first one to say that I definitely have not been using Wither Horde as much as I used to, but that's mainly due to me finally getting conditional finality, and it's sort of hard for that weapon to even leave my side anymore. Regardless, Wither Horde, as I always say, is an exotic that you can slap on when you don't really know what else to use. It's great for ad clear, it's great for tick damage, and it's useful for literally any situation you find yourself in. This weapon alone is the Shadowkeep DLC's greatest contribution, which technically it came from a season, but don't worry about it. Uh, if you don't already have it, you'll find it at the exotic kiosk. Number 10, Commemoration. Last season's ranking number 11. Moving up in the world is everybody's favorite legendary machine gun from the Deepstone Crypt. 
As much as I've been enjoying the Song of Ear Ute from Crota, and honestly, that is my favorite machine gun, even I have to admit that this weapon is easily the best machine gun from an objective point of view. Reconstruction and Killing Tally is just a wild combination, and it's hella consistent when it comes to having ammo and dealing good damage. This thing will melt through enemies like a thousand degree knife through butter, and I absolutely love it. With Overload Machine Gun existing, and Void Singe being a common modifier for many activities every other week, there's no surprise as to why the GOAT makes it onto the list. Number 9. Forbearance. Last season's ranking, number 1. Okay, a very big shocker coming out of left field, the almighty forbearance falls quite the distance and barely makes it into the top 10. I honestly can't give much of a reason as to why I think that is, other than maybe people are just getting bored. I personally cannot stand how boring Forbearance has gotten, and I've stopped using it almost completely for those that watch my streams, you probably have noticed, and maybe this might also explain what has really gone on with Wither Horde this season as well. Now, I'm not knocking the weapon in any capacity, by the way. It's literally one of, if not the best gun in the entire game, simply because of its ad clear capabilities, paired with the fact that it's somehow a legendary weapon and not an exotic. Ambitious Assassin and Chain Reaction is just too crazy of a combo, and you'll find this weapon in Vow of the Disciple if you haven't gotten it already. Number 8, Sunshot. Finally, my boy Sunshot has made it into a top 15 video, and all it took was a spicy hand cannon buff to seal the deal. Truth is, this exotic has always been phenomenal, and the majority of people are just now seeing the truth. This season not only saw hand cannons get a buff, but also an anti-champion artifact perk, and when you take that and combine it with the fact that Solar is probably the most well-rounded subclass type for all classes, just about anybody can incorporate Sunshot into their day-to-day -day and absolutely bombard their enemies with Chain Reaction Hellfire. Not only that, but the Vex themed Sunshot ornament was sold for Bright Dust not too long ago, and we all know that fashion is the end game, and this shit looks absolutely wicked. Number 7, Riptide. Last season's ranking, number 6. Riptide finds itself almost in the exact same spot as last season, despite a pretty sizable nerf to Chill Clip. If you didn't know, Chill Clip recently got nerfed to no longer freeze champions in two bursts, as now it takes three. So why exactly is Riptide still so highly regarded? Well, not only is it a pretty easy weapon to get a hold of, all you have to do is play Crucible, but whereas previously you could use Chill Clip to stun overloads with your Stasis Slow and stun unstops in two shots by freezing and shattering them, this season we have Unstoppable Fusion as an artifact perk. So really, the Riptide is doing the same thing that it always has done, but even better for this season in particular, despite the nerf. I think as time goes on, people might, keyword might, rethink their love of Chill Clip fusions, but you never know. This Chill Clip nerf actually was enough for me to not even mention Riptide in my top 20 favorite PvE weapons in my last video, but I know that not everybody thinks the way that I do, so only time will tell. Number 6, Rufus's Fury. Last season's ranking, number 7. Riptide and Rufus's Fury have swapped spots since last season, and Rufus for the better of it. Rufus has always been a fan favorite ever since it dropped with Ruta Nightmares, and that's because not only does it have a great perk pool, but Strand in general is just a very popular subclass, as it's a lot of fun to play and is very effective. It rolls with Reconstruction, Pugilist, and Demo in the first column, with Target Lock, Adrenaline, Frenzy, Paracausal Affinity, and Hatchling in the second, so as you see, it can suit just about any player's playstyle. With the introduction of Banner of War for Titans this season on Strand, I wouldn't be surprised if many players were using a Pugilist Rufus's Fury to pair with that build. But honestly, many people are probably already doing that with number 5, Monte Carlo. Never would I ever have thought to have seen Monte Carlo in the top 15 before, let alone the top 5. This weapon has risen to stardom for two separate reasons. Firstly, what we just talked about, tons of players are using it for ability-based builds, with the majority of them probably being Strand Titans with Banner of War, since getting your melee back is incredibly crucial for that build, and that build is very overpowered. But also, Bungie has been hyping up the catalyst of this weapon for a very long time, and it finally released this season. If you don't know, the catalyst basically allows you to glaive melee an enemy with the bayonet, and if I'm being honest, 
I forget to use it like 99% of the time because it's just kind of dumb. Pretty cool, but I don't care for it. Anyways, it's a good weapon, it's really good for many different builds, and also it has anti-barrier capabilities with this season, so there really isn't much of a downside to using it. Number 4, Retrofit Escapade. Easily one of my favorite weapons in the game simply due to the fact that it's fun to use. I'm glad to see Retrofit crack the top 5 as many hardcore players talk shit about this machine gun, but I honestly don't get the hate as having a weapon with 4th times and target lock is a dream when we have such a fast RPM such as this one. It's become obtainable again via this season's exotic mission rotator and it'll drop from Seraph Shield, and I'm glad that more people can give it a spin. So with this season having overload machine gun, as well as Void Singe modifiers, as well as it finally coming back after a while. I'm sure that's definitely helped boost this weapon's popularity. And in regards to commemoration, you don't even have to raid for this one, and it's a very solid Void Machine Gun. Number 3, Thunderlord. Okay, I admit, as someone that's talked a lot of mess about Thunderlord in the past, that I actually have found a proper use case for it this time, in the form of Master Death Singer's Challenge from last week. And in general, this weapon is fantastic for Death Singer anyways. Thunderlord in this community has basically become what linear fusion rifles used to be, and that's just that it's a brain dead way to deal damage while also having that damage not be half bad. And I'm not really using brain dead here as an attack on anyone either, sometimes you just don't feel like doing any of the extra stuff that comes with a DPS phase and just want a proven means to kill a raid boss in X amount of phases. Even outside of raid scenarios, I've used this weapon recently with some of my arc builds as I've been really using a lot of arc, so I imagine not 100% of its popularity is coming from raid scenarios, you probably still have some stuff in just general play and GMs, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was the majority due to the release of Crota and the Deathsinger encounter. Number 2, Quicksilver Storm. My favorite exotic primary of all time has finally made its way into the video, and it lands itself at number 2 no less. As I said in a recent video of mine, Quicksilver Storm is simply a grenade launcher disguised as a primary. Since it comes with unlimited ammo and fantastic damage, as long as you charge up your shots by simply hitting your targets. This weapon goes above and beyond when it comes to being effective and bursting down champions, majors, and even helps when you're taking down a boss's health bar and a GM and don't have ammo in your other weapons. Quicksilver Storm is the epitome of what every exotic should be. It looks badass, it does something very unique, and most importantly, despite what Bungie likes to say, it's effective. I know a lot of the times Bungie likes to say they just want their exotics to be unique and yada yada, but I'm telling you, if I can only have one equipped at a time, I want it to be very, very good, and Quicksilver Storm is just that. And moving on from one of my favorite weapons of all time, number one, the Wish Ender. This weapon during the past few seasons has been slowly but surely rising through the ranks as more and more people find out that Wish Ender is genuinely just overpowered. This weapon is basically what pre-nerf Arbalist was, when the entire community was complaining about Arbalist, that it was too strong, that it was boring, that it was the end-all be-all of just being a great weapon. This time around, we have Wish Ender that's a primary with unlimited ammo, and because of that, would generate you more heavy ammo in general as a result too. It also spikes your super energy more than other weapons when hitting a target, and that probably has to do with the fact that this weapon pierces through targets and can proc more multiple times. You get it from the Shattered Throne Dungeon Quest and it's just a monster. In GM difficulty it one shots red bars while also functioning as a sniper rifle in some scenarios, and even one shots barrier shields as well. You can use this thing on bosses, you can use it on majors, you can use it on adds, it can pierce those adds and kill multiple at a time, you get more heavy ammo because it's an exotic primary, it gives you more super energy, it's just a crazy crazy weapon that I'm honestly surprised hasn't gotten nerfed yet, and I wouldn't be surprised if it does happen in the future. I think if that doesn't happen, Wish Ender might drop down by next season, uh, similarly to Wither Horde and Forbearance, as people are just going to get bored of it. I've been using this weapon a lot whenever I do my uh, Grandmaster Nightfall helps on stream, and I can definitely say that I'm kind of getting bored of the Wish Ender, but it is very strong, and it's definitely deserving of that number one spot.
And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this season's episode of the most popular series. I gotta say, I was pretty surprised with a lot of the placements in today's video, and this has to be one of the most diverse episodes we've had in the whole series. Lots of huge hitters like Wither Horde, Forbearance, and the like were shifted around more than I thought, and we saw some new picks here as well for that nice splash of variety. Anyways guys, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and even tuning in here towards the end. I'd like to give a massive shout out to all my previous uploads, word of the day enjoyers, as you guys helped the YouTube algorithm from swallowing me alive, so thank you so much. Today's word of the day is going to be exquisite for those of you that would like to weave that into your comment today and make it into my next video as a bit of a thank you. Anyways, lads, I love you all so much. Thank you guys for the massive support on the channel this season so far. A lot of my videos have been doing fantastic, and I cannot thank you guys enough. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.